we're at Kennedy Space Center. Mm -hmm. Axiom is going to give four private citizens the chance to go to the space station. SpaceX is the carrier. Why is NASA involved? Well, first of all, we're providing the, the place to go, right? So right. one of the really cool things is they get to go to the International Space Station, which um, I think they're pretty lucky people to be able to be the first private citizens that get to go to the International Space Station and get to see what we do every day and our government astronauts do every day in space. Is it something that stresses you out, worries you, <laughs> some private astronauts going up? How, you know, how involved is NASA in the training part, for example? Well, you know, part of our job, I feel like, is to figure out how to do it and okay. then make sure that we're working with companies and other people so that they can learn from us. Okay. And so that's really what's been going on over the last, you know, two or three years is that we've been working with these different companies, having them do our lessons learned, actually allowing them to use the contractor that we use for training and, and continue to bring industry in on the lessons and the 50, 60 years of space flight that we've had so that they can do it themselves. So you, you run space operations, which includes yes. humans, NASA astronauts going from Earth to the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. What do you get out of this? What does the Axiom mission give NASA? I'm hoping it gives a whole bunch of us new rides in the future. Okay. And, and in 20, 30 years, guess what? I'm able to do science and research and technology development on space stations that I don't have to invest in, that I'm buying a ride in. You know, what we're thinking about is our future. We're thinking about LEO economy for the, you know, the next hundreds of years. And this is our first step for us to, in the future, be able to buy a, a laboratory in the sky, time on a laboratory in the sky, while we're investing in going to Mars and, either, and even farther out. So it's an idea that the private sector kind of takes the cost burden of what's needed to be in low Earth orbit and you deploy resources to other projects. That's basically what you're saying. I actually feel like it's about the government had a vision when they set up NASA. And one of the parts of that vision was us to enable our commercial economy and the launch economy and the space economy. And so what we've been doing is figuring out how to do things. And then when we feel like industries at an advanced enough stage to be able to do it, then we hand that piece over, allow there to be an economic value for it, and then move on to the next thing. This was really an important idea when NASA was set up. They're going up to the International Space Station at a time where there are three Russian cosmonauts, astronauts up there. Will mm -hmm. they get the opportunity to meet, to cross over to the Russian side of ISS? You know what's really cool about the International Space Station is it is a peaceful place in space where we all live and work together. And so when we go up there, guess what? The crew members actually get to decide if you're invited over or not. And they normally By will have yeah invitation, invitation, yes. And so I'm sure there'll be a few invitations to be able to come over for a meal or to be able to talk together. Um, but it's a peaceful place where we live and work together. The space relationship between the United States and Russia and Europe and Canada is pretty long-standing. 1998, 99, and then 2000 to orbit in ISS. Are you confident that, that Russia will play a part on, on an ongoing basis in ISS? Yes, I think we are continuing to work together on how we are continuing our operations. Both countries have been in low Earth orbit for a very, very, very long time. Actually, our Russian partners have been in low Earth orbit for even longer than we have. Right. And so we're both continuing to set up our follow-on strategies for post-ISS. And so I'm confident that we'll both, it'll be in both of our best interest to continue to work together. AX1 is happening at a pretty busy time. There's a lot happening on range. You had mm. National, the longest stretch ever on ISS, mm. then come back down to Earth aboard Russian technology. How has managing the process been, particularly with what's going on with the conflict in Ukraine? Has it been difficult to make all of those things happen? Well, I think what's really important is we have to have focus. Right? We know, I talked about, this is our, our mission of, of spring, spring missions. We got a whole string of missions here this spring. And so I think what we've had to do is to very carefully work through, make sure we've got all the arrangements and pieces in place for us to execute very carefully on each of our missions. And the team's done a great job doing that. And finally, is it possible that NASA this year uses Soyuz to send astronauts up to ISS or WAC or next year 
or, or is SpaceX kind of the provider of necessity right now, provider of choice? So right now we, are, we have the SpaceX missions all set to go. We are also doing a few mitigation activities to maybe protect for a crew member to go, okay. but we're still working through all the government agreements to be able to have that actually uh, be in place. And is it possible that a cosmonaut, a Russian citizen, could go up with SpaceX, for example? Right now, we have all the seats for our International Space Station missions um, assigned, and so we'd have to be we'd have to have those agreements in place to be able to do that. And then this is finally, the range has <laughs> been very busy. Yes. You look at AX-1, you have Artemis, you have crew missions. How does the Axiom type mission fit in? Do, is it something you might have to put on the back burner in the future if to prioritize crew missions or to prioritize these kind of longer term projects? How do you kind of prioritize, rank, prioritize, rank them, right. right? I mean, obviously, Keeping the ISS staffed is very, very important. So we've had to really work through when do we have to have this vehicle launched and when would we have to have it re be returned for us to be able to protect for making sure we get crew on orbit. This is part of the job, right? And so the team's been working very, very hard to go make that happen.